today we're working on an iPhone 12 that has issues with the microphone. According to the customer, the microphone goes in and out. Sometimes the microphone gives audio for a few hours and then it'll go out again. Right now, when I test the microphone on voice notes, it records my voice, but as I continue to record more voice notes, it eventually stops working. However, when I apply pressure on the motherboard, the voice notes app looks to recognize the mic, but it doesn't actually record. We already tried another flex cable and we still have the same issue. This is going to require a motherboard repair. The first thing I'm going to do is open the software for the schematics for the iPhone 12. Then I'm going to the connector for the charging port label J11200, which also connects to the lower mic. Now I'm going to look for those pins that are only related to the lower mic. On the left side of the connector, I find two pins that are related to the mic, pin 35 and 33. The line that they are connected to begins with the name mic lower to codec. On the other side, we find another two pins that are also related to the lower mic, pin 34 and 36. These lines are the ones that carry the voice audio to an integrated circuit called the codec audio IC. From there, our voice is converted into a digital form that the CPU can understand. Now, I am going to use diode mode on my multimeter and compare the readings on the pins for the lower mic to the ones provided by the software. Under the microscope, I begin testing. As I'm taking measurements, the pins sometimes give me the correct readings, sometimes oil, which we can interpret as an open line. This means that something along these lines has become disconnected. And only when we apply pressure, we get the readings. Most likely the phone suffer an impact and some of the solder bolts under the codec audio IC are only making contact when we apply pressure on the motherboard. Now we have to follow those lines and find the location of the codec audio IC and do a process called revolving. After following the lines with the software, we find that the codec audio IC for this phone is located on the other side of the motherboard, right next to the CPU. So now we use the preheater at 220 Celsius to separate the bottom board from the upper one. As you can see here, the codec audio IC is located right next to the CPU. We have to be very careful when we apply heat because we can overheat the CPU. The lower motherboard doesn't have anything to do with the codec audio IC, so we're going to put it away. To protect the CPU from overheating, I'm going to use a metal shield and add heat resistant tape. To remove the IC, I will use a process that I like to call gravity. This is the process in which I grab the circuit with the tweezers and lift up the entire motherboard. I apply heat and wait for the circuit to desolder. This way the heat will not affect other components. At this point I'm spreading heat in a circular motion around the IC. Now that it's out, I'm going to clean the traces on the motherboard. First I add low temperature solder paste and spread it all over the traces. Then I add flux and I begin cleaning with the soldering iron and with the solder wick. We have to make sure the solder traces are completely clean so that we can be successful in the installation of the IC. Now it's time to clean the IC. Add flux, then go over it with the soldering iron. Now we use the solder wick, some alcohol and our circuit is ready to be revolved. We use a stencil that matches our circuit, align it and fill in the holes with solder paste. Then we remove the residue and apply heat until we form the solder balls. If the solder balls are uneven, we repeat the process until they are all the same size. When the solder balls are the same size, we apply flux and heat. It then becomes loose from the stencil. Now it's time to install the IC. First we apply flux in the center where the traces are located. Then we align the circuit. The circuit will always have a reference point like a dot or arrow. I make sure the reference point is always facing the same direction as when I took it out. Then I tilt the motherboard and I check if the solder bolts are aligned with the motherboard traces. When I apply heat at 340 Celsius, I wait for the circuit to move into place or for the flux from underneath to spread out. Once that happens, we stop applying heat immediately. Then we clean the area with alcohol. This repair is almost ready. Now it's time to test the phone. 
We clean the solder from the traces of the upper and lower motherboard with the soldering iron and the solder wick. Then, in order to test the motherboard, we use the eye socket, power supply, and charging port flex cable. Then, I turn on the device using our tweezers as a power button. Now, we go to the voice notes app, and as you can see, it's recognizing my voice. Now, we can solder the two boards together. I use a specialized stencil for the iPhone 12 to do the reballing. Then, I repeat the same method that I did for the codec audio IC. After we are done with the reballing, we attach the motherboards with the preheater. Finally, we test the mic one last time and the mic is working. This repair has been completed. Thank you for watching.